Hello, good evening. Good afternoon, Roberto, Juan, Edwin. Thank you for being on time. How are you today? Good afternoon, teacher. I'm fine. You're fine? Good. Did you rest a lot? ¿Te han descansado mucho? Lo necesario. Okay, that's nice to hear that. Okay, so, and how are you doing with the platform? ¿Tienen alguna pregunta sobre la plataforma? ¿Algún ejercicio? ¿Algún video que han visto? ¿Algún tema? No questions? No questions. Okay. No questions. Good. So, I'm going to start sharing uh, from where we stopped yesterday. Okay. So, here we are. Can you see my screen now? Yes. Okay, thank you so much for confirming. So we're going to watch this video and the conversation is that's exciting. We're going to study about the placement of adjectives and also we will practice this conversation. So let's pay attention to the video. Hi everyone. In this class, you'll learn placement of adjectives. Particularly, you will learn be plus adjective and noun plus adjective. Let's get started by listening to a conversation title. That's exciting. Let's listen and practice. Hey, Stephanie. I hear you have a new job. Yes. I'm teaching math at Lincoln High School. How do you like it? It's great. The students are terrific. How are things with you? Not bad. I'm a firefighter now, you know. That's exciting. Yes, but it's a very stressful job, and sometimes it's dangerous. In essence, what we want to learn is how to express the same thing, but in different ways. First, let's analyze the examples on the left-hand side of this chart, B plus adjective. We can follow this formula to better understand this topic. Article, a or an, plus profession, plus apostrophe, plus job, plus verb to be, plus adjective. Now let's analyze the first example on the chart. A firefighter's job is dangerous. At the beginning of our sentence, we will typically use an article whenever we're talking about a singular job. So in this case, a, then we have profession plus apostrophe s, which expresses possessive, plus job. After that, we're going to add the verb to be, in this case is. is. Uh, finally, we put the adjective. Let's look at our next example. A doctor's job is stressful. At the beginning of our sentence, we have an article, in this case a. Then we have profession plus apostrophe s, which expresses possessive, plus job. After that, we have the verb to be is. Finally, we have the adjective. Stressful. Now we want to express these same examples using adjective plus noun. We can follow this formula to better understand this topic. Article, a or an, plus profession, plus has, plus article, a or an, plus adjective, plus noun. So let's make sense of the first example now. A firefighter has a dangerous job. At the beginning of our sentence, we will use the, an article, a. Then we will have the profession. Fire fighter. After that, we add the verb pass. Next, the article A. Then we will add the adjective. And finally, we need to add the noun, which in this case is job. 
Now, I would like to give you some adjectives which may describe different jobs. And then I would like for you to express your opinion about different jobs that we have learned so far. Let me read them for you. Boring, easy, dangerous, exciting, difficult, stressful. So using the adjectives that I just gave you, I would like for you to describe different jobs. And I would like for you to express your ideas in different ways using be plus adjectives and adjective plus noun. For example, a lawyer's job is stressful. A lawyer has a stressful job. After you finish this activity, please share your work in our discussion forums. Okay, so we're going to go step by step. The first thing is to practice the conversation, right? So let me make it bigger if I, I think I can. Let's click. Okay, now I think it's big enough for you to watch it. Do you have any question about the vocabulary or the pronunciation of any of these words in the conversation? No questions? Okay, if there are no more, uh, any question about it, um, do we have volunteers to role play this? Volunteers to role play? Yeah, thank you so much. I have Juan Carlos, a volunteer to practice with Juan Carlos. Any other volunteer to practice with Juan Carlos? Roberto, thank you so much. Now let's listen to Juan Carlos and Roberto. You can start, Juan Carlos. Okay. Hey, Stephanie, I heard you have a new job. Yes, I am. I'm teaching Matarlin Paul High School. How do you like it? It's great. The students are terrific. How are things with you? No bad. I am a firefighter now. You know? That's everything. Yes, but it is a very stressful job and sometimes it's dangerous. Oh, okay. Pretty good. Excellent. Thank you so much. I uh, just heard this. It's been mispronounced. This word is exciting oh exciting okay exciting uh -huh. exciting es como decir emocionante exciting okay. exciting y esta solo así como para que terrific no es algo malo cuando decimos terrific es como decir fantastic el que sí wow. es malo es decir terrible se escribe casi similar a que se los escribo terrible. Como en español, solo que se pronuncia diferente terrible. So if I said my students are terrible, mm -mm, eso sí es malo. Pero si yo digo my students are terrific, es bueno. Mis estudiantes son fabulosos. So, yeah, so terrific is a good thing. Um, okay, now let's change. You start Roberto and... And you continue then, Juan Carlos. Let's continue. Okay. Hey, Stephanie, I heard you, you have a new job. 
Yes, I am teaching math at Lincoln High School. How do you like it? It's great that the students are terrific for with you. Not bad. I'm a firefighter now. Do you know? That's exciting. Yes. Exciting. One more time. That's exciting. That's that that's exciting. exciting. Yes. But it's a very stressful job. And sometimes it's dangerous. Okay, excellent job. Thank you so much, Roberto and Juan Carlos. Do we have two more volunteers? Two more. Two more volunteers? I have Erica. And who wants to practice with Erica? A volunteer to practice with Erica, please. Oh, okay, Jose Alberto, thank you so much. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. <clears throat> Hi, Stephanie. I hear you have a new job. Yes, I'm teaching math at Lincoln High School. How do you like it? It's great. The students are terrified. Terrified? How are things with you? No, but I am. Uh... <laughs> no, but I am a firefighter. Firefighter. Five father. Five. Five fighter. No, but I am five fighter now. You know. That's exciting. Um... Yes, but this is a very scareful joke. And sometimes it's dangerous. Okay, very good. Now let's change. Hi, Stephanie. I hear I hear you have a new job. Yes, I am teach much in Lincoln High School. Who do you like it? It's great. The students are terrific. Terrific. How who are how who are how are things who how how are things in, with you with you? Not bad. I'm firefighter now. Do you know? Yes, but it's a very scareful joke. And sometimes it's dangerous. Okay. <laughs> no worries. It's it's a matter of practice. Es, es cuestión de practicar y repetir varias veces. Por ejemplo, eh, si nos cuesta esta pregunta, la de Richard, en el segundo párrafo. How do you like it? How do you like it? How do you like it? Ajá, unimos like con it. How do you like it? How do you like, how do you like it? it? Excellent. How do you Gaben, like it? how do you like it? How do you like it? Excelente. How do you like it? Entre más uno repite, este, se va volviendo más, eh, con más fluidez y va sonando más natural, pero es cuestión de repetir y practicar bastante. Eh, recuerden que la conversación está en la plataforma y ustedes pueden ver cuántas veces quieran el video. Le pueden ir poniendo pausa también para, um, para que pues, eh, puedan escuchar y luego repetir. Ok. Y uh, the next thing, lo, lo que teníamos luego es eh, cómo vamos a colocar los adjetivos. Eh, recuerden los adjetivos que estaban en la plataforma, los que vimos en el video. ¿Cuáles eran los adjetivos? Remember, one is in the dangerous, exciting, 
Any other? Dangerous, exciting. Boring, mm -hmm. stressful. Boring, stressful. Uh huh. Sí. Sí. Mm -hmm. And that's another one. Easy. And we have them here. Uh, so we have a couple of them being used here. So we're going to listen. Vamos a escuchar por eh, la pronunciación y aquí ven cómo están todos los adjetivos. Tenemos easy, boring, exciting, dangerous, difficult, stressful. Then we have again exciting and relaxing. Let's listen. Page 53, exercise 6, snapshot. What do you do? What's your job like? Listen and practice. I'm a server in a coffee shop. It's easy, but boring. I don't like my job much. I'm a firefighter. It's exciting and very dangerous, but I like my job a lot. I'm a social worker. It's difficult and really stressful, but I love my job. I'm a florist. My job isn't very exciting, but it's pretty relaxing. I like my job okay. Okay, so we're going to listen one by one and we're going to try to repeat. Vamos a escucharlos otra vez, pero voy a detenerme un rato para que los practiquemos. Page 53, exercise 6. Snapshot. What do you do? What's your job like? Listen and practice. I'm a server in a coffee shop. It's easy but boring. I don't like my job much. Okay, esta es la primera. Aquí vamos a tratar de unir I don't like. I don't like my job much. Nada más pues. Ya escuchamos, I'm a server in a coffee shop. It's easy, but boring. I don't like my job much. A volunteer to repeat it? Volunteer para repetir este, el del coffee shop? Volunteer. Juan Carlos, thank you so much. I am a server in a coffee shop. It is easy, but boring. I, I don't like my job much. Excellent. I don't like my job much. Excellent, Juan Carlos. Thank you so much for practicing. Uh, let's listen to the second, firefighter. I'm a firefighter. It's exciting and very dangerous, but I like my job a lot. Mm -hmm. I'm a fighter fighter. It's exciting and very dangerous, but I like my job a lot. Escucharon como si una I, ¿verdad? But I like, but I like, but I like my job a lot. Volunteer? Roberto? Okay. No? Okay. Sí, sí. I'm a fire fighter. It is exciting and and very dangerous but i like my job a lot mm -hmm. very good exciting another volunteer thank you so much roberto i got a volunteer para repetir esta remember ese tiene dos palabritas como más o menos difíciles firefighter it's just practicing firefighter exciting firefighter Exciting. Exciting. Five sided. Volunteer. No more volunteers? No. Okay, Jose Alberto. Thank you. Jose Alberto and then Juan Carlos. I am five fighter. It is exciting and very dangerous, but I like my job a lot. Really good. Thank you so much, Jose. Let's listen to Juan Carlos now. 
I am a fire fire. It is exciting and very dangerous, but I like my job a lot. Excellent, Juan Carlos. Well done. Thank you so much. Now let's continue with the social worker. El tercero, the social worker. Let's listen. I'm a social worker. It's difficult and really stressful, but I love my job. Mm -hmm. Okay, she said, I'm a social worker. It's difficult and really stressful, but I love my job. Mm -hmm. But I love, but I love my job. Y luego está stressful. No decimos stressful. 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 Okay? Volunteers? Erika, thank I you so much. Thank you. Um, I am a social work. It's difficult and really a scream for a strong for. <laughs> But but I love but I love my job. Uh huh. Very good. Any other volunteer? I am social work. Ernesto, thank you so much. Yes, I'm a social worker. Ernesto. Yes, Ernesto. I'm a social worker. Uh -huh. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, very good, Ernesto. Thank you so much. Good job. Now let's listen to the last one. Vamos a escuchar el último. I'm a florist. I'm a florist. My job isn't very exciting, but it's pretty relaxing. I like my job okay. Okay, she said, I'm a florist. My job isn't very exciting, but it's pretty relaxing. I love my, well, I said I like. I like my job, okay. <laughs> All right, a volunteer for this one? This is pretty easy. Jose Alberto, thank you. I am, I am a florist. My job is very exciting, but it's pretty relaxing. I like my job, okay. You did it excellent. Thank you so much, Jose. Any other volunteer? Okay, I have a... Daisy. Thank you so much, Daisy. I am Flores. My job isn't very exciting, but I pretty relaxing. I like my job. Okay. Okay, pretty good, Daisy. Excellent. Thank you so much for participating. Let's see, exciting, exciting. Yeah, excellent. Any other volunteer? Tenemos algo otro voluntario para el del Flores? I see Edwin, thank I you so you. much. Mm, I am a florist. My job is very exciting, but this is pretty relaxing. I like my job, okay. Thank you so much, Erika. You did it very good. Now let's listen to Edwin. Okay. I'm a florist. My job is very exciting, but it's really relaxing. I like my job, okay. Excellent. You did it very good. So you see, it's a thing of practice and we have practiced pronunciation now and you did it very good. Thank you so much for joining this practice. And then you had the grammar focus. Teníamos el grammar focus. 
Um, placement of adjectives. Esto es, um, no es tan complicado, solo es como decir lo mismo en dos maneras diferentes. Lo podemos decir utilizando el verbo to be, que es ser o estar. Eh, tenemos aquí a doctor job is, ahí está el verbo to be, y luego al final el adjetivo. Entonces va el verbo to be y luego el adjetivo. A doctor job is stressful. Luego tenemos a window washer's job is dangerous. Ok. Y aquí también, como ven, estamos usando el posesivo. Eh, donde vemos aquí este apóstrofe con la letra S, es un possessive. Ok. Esto me dice el trabajo de un doctor, de un doctor. A doctor's job. Eso es possessive. Uh, este aquí, el trabajo de quién? Del window washer. Ok, ese apóstrofe con la S es possessive. Es un posesivo. Me indica de quién, eh, de quién estoy, de quién, de quiénes pertenece. Por ejemplo, en este caso, el trabajo. El trabajo de un limpiador de vidrio. El trabajo de un doctor. Entonces, en esta estructura utilizamos el posesivo sobre el nombre, luego el nombre del que estamos hablando, el verbo to be y luego el um, adjetivo. Mm. Y la otra forma, si se fijan a doctor, aquí ya no hay apóstrofe más S en de este lado. Okay. Porque estamos usando el verbo tener, ¿verdad? Entonces ya no es necesario usar el possessive. A doctor has. Ok. Y luego el artículo A más el adjetivo. Y al final el noun, el nombre, que es job. Estamos hablando de los trabajos. A doctor has a stressful job. Entonces, lo que vamos a hacer ahorita es practicarlo. Déjenme ver si el ejercicio está igual en el material que ustedes han descargado por si lo quieren hacer desde ahí. Sí, está similar, solo que no tenemos espacio para trabajarlo, pero ya. Yeah. You can do it from here. So no hay espacio. A security guard has a boring job. Uh, uh -huh. Okay, ya yeah, está similar, solo no, no hay um, no tienen espacio para escribir. Entonces igual lo pueden hacer en su um, en su cuaderno, porque si sí, aquí como ven está un poquito diferente, si se fijan acá no, no tenemos espacio para escribir, pero pues es el mismo ejercicio, es decir, cada oración en una forma diferente. Y aquí pues tenemos a la vista, le voy a dejar aquí el, el, la cajita del gramática para que vayan tomando como referencia. Aquí tenemos en la primera a musician jobs. Eh, it's interesting. Lo tenemos con la estructura del verbo be. Entonces tenemos que pasarlo a esta otra estructura. A musician has an interesting job. Entonces vamos a hacer las oraciones para la del 2 al 6. Y luego podemos compartirlo. Pueden hacerlo vía chat o pueden escribirlo en un blog de notas si están en su computadora. O lo escriben en el cuaderno y luego lo, lo ponen en el chat de la Miri. Entonces, le voy a dar tiempo para que lo hagan. No sé si tienen alguna pregunta, si está claro el ejercicio. No questions. Okay, if there are no questions, I'll give you time for you to start working.
Have you finished or you need more time? I am finished. Okay, let's see. Can somebody write the number two? I don't listen to your teacher. Hi, teacher. Can you listen to me now? Yes. Okay. Now, um, I'll continue sharing. Let's see, compartiendo. Okay, vamos a ver. ¿Cómo les quedó entonces la número dos? Pueden escribir en la burbujita de chat y ahí escriben cómo quedó la oración o la puede decir si gusta, cómo sale mejor. ¿Cómo les quedó la dos? An athlete's job is exciting. An athlete, athlete has an exciting job. Excellent. An athlete has Excellent, Juan Carlos. Thank you so much for your participation. Now, number three, a lion's job is stressful. Hi, teacher. Perdón, acabo de poner en mute porque escuchaba como una interferencia. <laughs> Bien rara. No sé si es porque ya va a llover, pero a uh, Erika, do you have the number three? Puede habilitar su micrófono. Yes, teacher. Uh, a lover has a, a lover has a, a strong full show. Excellent. That is correct, Erika. A lawyer. That it should be a lawyer. A lawyer has a has has a strong a strengthful is show. Aha, uh -huh. excellent. A lawyer has a stressful job. Excellent, Erika. Thank you so much. And thank you, Roberto, que lo escribió en el chat también. Muy bien. Now, the number four. A volunteer for number four. A security guard has a boring job. A volunteer. A security guard has a boring job. A security guard's job is boring. A securities, a securities guard job is boring. Okay, Ooh, yes, that is correct. Creo que Edwin no dijo. Thank you so much. Now, um, yes, Roberto, excellent. A security guard's job is boring. That's correct. Gracias por escribirlo en el chat. Let's see number five. A photographer has a difficult job. A volunteer, a photographer has a difficult job. A photographer's job is difficult. Excellent, that is correct. A photographer's job 
is difficult. Excellent. Thank you so much. Juan. Um, let's see number six. A police officer has a dangerous job. A police job is dangerous. A police officer job is dangerous. A police uh, officer job is dangerous. Okay, thank you so much. Yes, that is correct. So I see that you don't have any issues with this topic. Veo que lo han comprendido muy bien y no tienen eh, problemas con ello. So you can... Uh, it, let's see. Um, vamos a chequear asistencia. Ya es hora. Ya los que están son los que son, ¿verdad? Ya no esperamos a nadie. It's enough time. Vamos a chequear entonces. Daisy del Carmen Cepeda. Present teacher. Thank you, Daisy. Erwin Antonio Torres. Welcome. Orellana. Erika. Present teacher. Thank you, Erika. Ernesto Antonio Espinosa. Present. Thank you. Eh, Jaime Alberto Minero. José Alberto Orantes. Present. Thank you. José Alberto Quijada. Present. Thank you. José Francisco Martínez. Josué David Mejía. Juan Carlos Morán González. Ok, Juan Carlos Padilla. Present. Thank you. Karen Liliana Aquino. Catherine Ivonne Palacios. Roberto Parvin Lemos. Present. Thank you. Ruth Noemi Carpio. Vida Lester Pérez. Present teacher. Thank you. Ok. Remember to complete the platform. Tienen que eh, completar la plataforma. Eh, ya deberían de haber terminado el midterm exam. Tienen que tener completa la sección 1, sección 2, sección 3 y el midterm exam y avanzando ya en la 4. Solo nos quedan tres días de clase, los cuales serán la otra semana. En, eh, según el calendario, yo tengo que van a ser siempre lunes, martes y miércoles. ¿Es correcto? Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. Serían tres días entonces, como solo son dos. Sí, pero la otra semana tengo los tres días. Tengo que va a ser lunes, martes y miércoles. Y miércoles terminaríamos ya el módulo. Solo que miércoles salimos desvelados, entonces no sé. Va a ser difícil, pero haremos el posible. No. <risa> pero salen temprano ¿no? tal vez pueden dormir un rato en la mañana y se conectan ya luego a la clase <risa> aunque si tienen que está mucho todavía la cara de sueño no enciendan la cámara pero conéctense <risa> si sí, sienten que van a estar así un poco desmerecidos con la carita de cansancio no enciendan la cámara pero traten de conectarse porque ya es el último día y acuérdense que la asistencia también cuenta para que ustedes puedan eh, obtener su certificado así es que hagan lo posible pongan la alarma que lo despierte no sé, 10 a las 3 
y aunque no conecten la cámara, pero, pero sí traten de estar ahí en la meeting. Sí, vamos a seguir. Let me share. ¿Qué tenemos aquí? Para terminar la sección 3, tenemos una lectura. It's child profiles. Um, I think we have a video. So I'm going to share the video. Okay, we have this video. Si quieren la plataforma, tendríamos que estar hasta donde con las tareas. Ya tendrían que terminar el midterm y ya con la sección 4 también avanzando. Tienen que ir adelante con la sección 4. El examen, recuerden, está solamente este darle siguiente. So, si le doy siguiente aquí, ya vamos a llegar al midterm. I guess. Está cargando. Aquí está, lo primero son listening y aquí dice midterm. Este es el examen que ya tendrían que tenerlo hecho. Um, es de lo que se ha visto en la sección 1, 2 y 3. Eh, ya tienen que estar completos los ejercicios, el midterm exam y avanzado la sección 4 también, ya que pues la otra semana terminamos módulo, ya debe estar todo completo. He visto que un par ya terminaron la plataforma, ya hicieron todo, así es que si se puede... Y traten, si pueden terminarla, pues mucho que mejor. Pero como avance mínimo, ya deberían de estar en la sección 4. No sé si quieren revisar el examen o algún ejercicio o seguimos con los contenidos de la plataforma. O si sea, hay algún ejercicio que no hayan hecho y que, o que no entiendan cómo hacerlo, lo podemos ver. Me dicen. Okay, in the meantime, we'll continue and let's see, we're going to read the job profiles and then we're going to check this information. Who said this? Vamos a ver quién puede decir, eh, quién de los que están en la lectura dijo, after I win, I take a break. Number two, I don't usually work in the summer. Me dicen si hay alguna palabra o alguna oración que no, que no está muy clara. La uno, after I win, I take a break. I don't usually work in the summer. The restaurant closes late around 2 a.m. And my arms are tired. Vamos a escuchar la lectura y ver quién de estas cuatro personas han dicho estas oraciones. Ay, no tiene el audio. Qué terrible. Ok, entonces vamos a leer. Pero yo la voy a hacer un poquito más grande. Ok, es Lisa Parker. She is an actress. Lisa Parker has two jobs. She works as a waitress at night, but she's really an actress. During the day, she auditions for plays and television shows. Her schedule is difficult and she's tired a lot, but she's following her dream. Let's see, video game tester. Lots of teenagers want John Blue's job. He plays video games for eight hours a day and he gets paid for it. John is a video game tester for a big video game company. Is it ever boring? Never. John almost always wins. Okay, let's see. Becky Peck walks in the park every day for many hours, rain or shine. Becky is a professional dog walker. 
she walks dogs for other people. Sometimes she, she what? No, veo. <laughs> she takes uh, 20, I guess 20 dogs to the park at one time. Wow, 20 dogs is a lot. Now, uh, I think I can see it in a external window. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's pretty much the same. Uh, okay, Carlos Ruiz is a busy man. He plans lessons, grades, homework, help with after school activities, and of course, he teaches. His salary isn't great, but that's okay. His student like his class, so he's happy. Okay, now let me get back to the platform. Let me see. No, yeah. Escape, escape. Ay, qué genial se trabó. Okay. All right. After I win, I take a break. Do you remember who's that? Is that Lisa, John Blue, Becky, or Carlos? John Blue said someone there. I don't usually work in the summer. Who do you think it's? Carlito Ruiz. Carlos Ruiz? Mm, yeah, probably, yes, because he's a teacher. Uh -huh. The restaurant closes late around 2 a.m. Uh, Lisa Parker, is a waitress. Lisa okay. waitress. After work, my feet and my arms are tired. Oh, Becky, yeah. It sounds like it makes sense. <laughs> yes, excellent. So all the answers are correct. John Blue in the number one. Number two, Carlos Ruiz. Number three, Lisa Porter. And number four, Becky Pe. So yeah, so it's excellent. Now, uh, this is the last part of the section number three. Hasta aquí llegamos con la sección tres. Mm. So we can go ahead and check the midterm exam para que pues eh, tengan ahí Um, más o menos como van a ir las respuestas. So, we have the listening here. Vamos a hacer este listening. ¿Qué vamos a hacer primero? Veamos, there are bedrooms. Vamos a escuchar y a tratar de eh, agarrar esta información. There are bedrooms. No, two or three. There are some chairs in the dining room, living room, or kitchen. Number three, Julia needs a microwave, refrigerator, or a stove for the kitchen. Vamos a hacer este listening. Traten de agarrar estas tres uh, piezas de información as you listen. Eh, cuando no... <laughs> Cuando no les haga replay aquí, no hay que hacerle aquí en esta ventanita externa. One. I really love our new house, Dan. What's your new house like, Julia? It's my dream house. It has three bedrooms and two bathrooms. The bedrooms have big closets. Wow, three bedrooms. That sounds nice. Two. Yeah, I really love the house, but I need some furniture. What do you need? I need some things for the kitchen and the living room. What's in your living room now? Well, there are some chairs, but there isn't a sofa. Three. What do you need for the kitchen? Well, there's a refrigerator and a stove. But there's no microwave oven. Hmm. 
You know, I have a microwave oven, but I don't really use it. Do you want it? Yes, thanks. Everyone loves three things. Okay, that was a piece of cake, but do you want to listen one more time? Yes. yes okay, one more time. One. I really love our new house, Dan. What's your new house like, Julia? It's my dream house. It has three bedrooms and two bathrooms. The bedrooms have big closets. Wow, three bedrooms. That sounds nice. Two. Yeah, I really love the house, but I need some furniture. What do you need? I need some things for the kitchen and the living room. What's in your living room now? Well, there are some chairs, but there isn't a sofa. Three. What do you need for the kitchen? Well, there's a refrigerator and a stove, but there's no microwave oven. Hmm. You know, I have a microwave oven, but I don't really use it. Do you want it? Yes, thanks. Now let's check. Um, there are no two or three bedrooms. Three. Three bedrooms. And three. 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 Excellent. There are some chairs in the in the living room. kitchen. Living room. Living room. Voy a usar el cincuenta por cincuenta cincuenta o y más living room. Vamos a irnos para allá. Living room. Julia needs for the kitchen. Microwave oven. Microwave oven. Okay. Let's see. Uh, okay. <laughs> Excellent. So, yes, number one, three. Number two, living room. And number, number three, microwave. Uh-huh. 17 out of 17, so ya hicimos el primero. Vamos a ver el siguiente ejercicio. Complete the conversation. All right. Complete the conversation. Use the present of the verbs. Select the option that contains words to complete the question and answer. Vamos a estar completando estas conversaciones con el presente simple. Ok. Ah. Vamos a ver. Eh, la primera es una pregunta, entonces sabemos que primero parece ser una yes no question. Your apartment building an elevator. What do you think? Does have does does and does ah. your apartment building uh -huh. have uh, an elevator? Have. Does and have. Very good, Erika. I think, yes, the answer is correct. Uh, let me give the remote control to someone. Vamos a ver. No le puedo preguntar quién no quiere porque nadie va a decir. Vamos a tratar, yes. Erika. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Tiene el control, Erika. Solo tiene que hacer clic o manejar o tocar la pantalla de su teléfono. Si está desde el teléfono y si está con la computadora. Mm -hmm. Haga clic en la opción. Erika. Ahorita. Uh -huh. Este. Haz Erika, continue. Usted está controlando ahorita. Okay. Puede darle para abajo, scroll down. Le voy a ayudar a bajar porque veo que le está costando. Ahí vamos bajando. Sí, okay, el teléfono. <ríe> Ajá, okay. solo quizás deslizar. Ajá. Ok. Dos. 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 Plural. <ríe> yes. Mm. 
the room ahí sí usaríamos das porque recuerden que hemos así repetido tercera persona singular pero ahí está en plural de bedrooms sería do oh, ajá do the bedrooms have closet ajá do porque está en plural Erika but good continue no they do no they no they don't 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 Por la lluvia casi no la escucho. Ah, re fácil, solo acuérdense, ¿verdad? Y nos va sirviendo como repaso. Eh, the bedrooms, acá está en plural. Entonces, ya el sujeto es un plural. En este caso se convierte en they, ¿verdad? Por estar en plural. Uh -huh. The bedrooms. So, recuerden okay. ahí en el, el review. Vamos a seguir con el siguiente ejercicio. On scramble the sentences. That's pretty easy. Vamos a darle el control aquí al siguiente compañero. Dice Juan Carlos. <ríe> ok. Ahí está. Juan Carlos tiene el control ahora para que escriba ahí. On scramble es de poner en orden. La oración que está ahí. There is not a mirror. There is the, there isn't a mirror in bedroom. Hay que ponerla en orden. Sí, tiene no, no, ¿Eh? sí, no, me, no me aparece el teclado. Mm. Ajá, toco este, la pantallita y no me, no me aparece el teclado. Ah, ok. Quizás tenía Ahorita vamos a ver. ¿Eh? Sí, no, no aparece. Ah, oh, acá. Vamos a ver ahora. Hoy oh, sí. Hoy sí, teacher. There isn't. There isn't a mirror in the bedroom. A mirror in the bedroom. corrigió ahí el autocorrector quizás sí ay no es que con rapidito se cambia pero sería the reason a mirror in the the reason a mirror in the bathroom Okay, good. There isn't a mirror 
in the bedroom. Vamos. The next. Okay, next. Vamos a ver. Ahí está Esther. Para que nos ayude con la dos. Esther tiene el control. No te parece que te Aparecen mm. tres botoncitos, uno es el yeah. mouse, el siguiente es el tecladito. Sí, ya, ya lo encontré. Ok, ok. Ahí está. Qué rápido que cambia de, de mouse a teclado. Sí. sí. No deja escribir. Sí, ahí está. There are no pictures. No pictures. No me dejé No There are no pictures in the hall. in the hall. Okay, you have the contract for number three. There aren't any curtains in the dining room. Mm -hmm. In the dining room. Ok, ya nos dio la respuesta por ahí, José. Vamos a ver. There aren't. Any curtains. There aren't any curtains. Vamos a ver, creo que aquí hay un espacio de más. Ahí está bien. Aquí parece que está muy separado también. Uh -huh. And yes, your answers were correct. Uh, están correctas. There isn't a mirror in the bedroom. There are no pictures in the hall. And there aren't any curtains in the dining room. So, excellent. Y siempre vean si, por ejemplo, aquí las oraciones estaban bien, solo que si hay algún espacio, algún punto mal puesto, la plataforma dice incorrecto. Select the correct words. Ok, este está fácil, lo vamos a hacer rapidito. Este es seleccionar la palabra correcta para la oración que estamos viendo aquí. Esto está con lo de las profesiones y los lugares de trabajo. So, number one, what do you think? 
Receptionist. A judge. That's another multiple choice. Let's see. Mm -hmm. This is another multiple choice. So what do you think? <laughs> it says, hello, I work at the restaurant. Where do you work? Mm -hmm. Where do you work? Um, let's see, number two, it says, he's a fighter fighter. So what is the correct question? What does he do? Number three, they hate their jobs. How do you like their jobs? Number two, what does he do? Number three, how do they like their jobs? Complete the conversation. Tenemos que completar seleccionando el verbo be o have. Ah, que es lo que acabamos de estar haciendo, ¿verdad? Hay que recordar estas estructuras. Y lo último que hicimos ahorita en la sección tres. Yo... Um, a singer. What is the correct option here for a singer? That's so exciting. Has an exciting or an exciting? An exciting. An exciting. I disagree. I think a singer's job is mm. Pero dice, no estoy de acuerdo. Bueno, ajá. Eh, probamos con is boring. A ver. Conversation number two. A flight attendant. Uh -huh. Está conectada, así como esta. A singer has an exciting... I disagree, it's boring. Uh -huh. Están conectados. So number two, it says, a flight attendant has a stressful job. He said, I agree. It is stressful. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. A cashier's job. It's not easy. Not easy? It's easy. It's easy. No. It's easy. It's easy. Yes. A 
rasa difficult. Yes. A singer has an exciting job. I disagree. I think a single job is boring. Uh, number two, a flight attendant has a stressful job. I agree, it is stressful. Cheer's job is easy. I disagree. A cashier has a difficult job. So remember the answer. Eh, Pueden, no sé si lo han ido haciendo a, al mismo tiempo, al midterm, pero como les decía, ¿verdad? Esto tiene que estar um, así completo como lo hemos hecho hasta ya llegando a la sección 4. También ya tienen que tenerlo eh, avanzado en la plataforma. Así que traten, por favor, de completar eh, la sección Sería la 1, 2, 3, el midterm exam y la sección 4. Y pues si pueden terminar la plataforma, pues mejor ya están libres. Especialmente, bueno, eh, porque ya durante la semana es un poco más difícil ya por el trabajo. Entonces tal vez aprovechar la colita de la tarde para ponerse al día y avanzar. ¿Verdad? Y así empezamos la sección número 4. Sección número 4. It's broccoli is good for you. Uh, let's watch the first video. It's just a word power about food. This is vocabulary. So let's uh, make this bigger and let's watch the video. Hi, everyone. In this class, you'll learn vocabulary related to the food pyramid. You'll also learn how to express the foods that you like and dislike. Let's get started by listening and practicing the vocabulary on this food pyramid. Food pyramid. For good health, eat a lot of grains, vegetables, and fruit. Eat some dairy, meat, and other protein. Eat very little fat, oil, and sugar. Listen and practice. Fat, oil, sugar. Cream. Butter, candy, oil, potato chips, meat and other protein, fish, beans, nuts, chicken, eggs, beef, dairy, milk, yogurt, Cheese, fruit, bananas, apples, oranges, strawberries, mangoes, vegetables, broccoli, carrots, lettuce, tomatoes, potatoes, grains. Bread, cereal, crackers, rice, noodles, pasta. Now, I would like for you to practice the vocabulary that we just learned. To do this, we're going to express the food that we like and don't like. We will practice each section of the food pyramid. Let me give a couple of examples. For the first section, fat, oil, sugar, I like cream, butter, and oil. I don't like candy and potato chips. The idea here is to practice all the vocabulary. So while you may like all the stuff from this food pyramid, I would like for you to think about your friends, family, and coworkers, and think about their likes and dislikes. Um, for example, 
my sister likes milk, uh, yogurt, uh, but she doesn't like cheese. Now it's your turn to practice. I would like for you to use all the vocabulary that we learned on this lesson and express likes and dislikes. After you complete this task, please share your work in our discussion forums. Let me share what you have in your... Um, okay, this is what we just practiced is the food pyramid. I think that you can see my screen, but I need to make it uh, smaller. Okay, this is the vocabulary that you just heard in the platform in that video. So, uh, is there anything that is not really clear about this vocabulary? Hay algo de acá que no está muy claro del vocabulario. We have cream, candy, potato strip, butter, oil, fish, beans, nuts, Chicken, beef, eggs, milk, yogurt, cheese, banana, apple, mango, strawberries, oranges, broccoli, carrots, lettuce, potatoes, tomatoes, bread, cereal, crackers, rice, noodles, and pasta. ¿Hay alguno de esos que no esté claro o se no se vea algo por ahí? Or we're okay with the vocabulary? All clear. All clear. So what about the exercise that is suggested in the platform? No sugiere que practiquemos diciendo lo que nos gusta o no nos gusta de cada sección. Y podemos empezar por fat, oil, and sugar. Fat, oil, and sugar. They can say, I like potato chips or I love potato chips. I don't like butter or I don't like candies. What about you? Any volunteer? Me too, cream. It like cream or you don't like cream? I, I like cream. Cream. Is there something cream. you don't like from that section? <laughs> 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 At the next. Juan Carlos. I like cream and candy. I don't like oil. Oh, excellent. Thank you so much. Another volunteer? Hello. Okay, Jose. I like, I like milk, don't like uh, fish. Okay, we are in fat, oil, and sugar. Fat, oil, and sugar. Okay, let's go with the meat and other proteins. I I don't like beans. <laughs> I hate them. I'm tired of beans. And I like nuts. What about you? I like beef, eggs, like kitchens, beef. fish, nuts. All. Uh, maybe yes, all. You like them all. Excellent. Another volunteer? 
Juan Carlos, thank you. I like chicken, egg, and bean. I don't like beef and fish. Okay, that's interesting. Thank you so much for sharing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Any other volunteer for the meat and other protein section? Okay, let's go for dairy. So we have milk, yogurt, and cheese. I like all of them. I like milk, yogurt, and cheese. What about you? Any volunteer? I like Carlos. it. Oh, Daisy. And then Juan Carlos. I, I like yogurt. I don't like milk. Okay. Thank you so much, Daisy. Juan Carlos? I like all them. You like all of them. Okay. Yes. Good. Now, what about fruit? About fruit, I don't like oranges, but I like bananas, strawberries, apples, and mangoes. I like all them. You like all of them. Yeah. Hmm. Excellent. Yeah. Good, Jose. Thank you. Any other volunteer? I like all them too. No, oh, you like all of them. Very good. What about vegetables? Uh, about vegetables, I see here broccoli, carrots, tomatoes, lettuce, and potatoes. I like all of them and I love, I really love potatoes. <laughs> what about you? I like all them, but uh, broccoli, mm. not very much. You don't like broccoli very much. Mm, not much. Okay, good. Thank you so much, Jose. Anybody else? I like potato and tom tomato. The rest, I don't like. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Now, what about grains? Oh, right. Grains, we have bread, cereal, crackers, rice, noodles, and pasta. Me, well, personally, I like all of them except for crackers. I don't like crackers. What about you? I like all of them. You like all of them? Good. Yeah. Anybody else? I Mama. like all mm -hmm. them too. You like all of them too. All right. Yeah. Very good. Excellent. So, and after that, we have a conversation. The topic of this conversation is how about some sandwiches? So, let's listen to the conversation and then we're going to practice. Let me share the audio from the platform. Okay, how about some sandwiches? Hi everyone. In this class you'll learn what count and non-count nouns are. Additionally, you'll learn how to use the expressions some and any. Let's get started by listening to a conversation titled, How About Some Sandwiches, which illustrates how this topic is used in a real-life setting. Let's listen and practice. What do you want for the picnic? Hmm, how about some sandwiches? Okay, we have some chicken in the refrigerator, but we don't have any bread. And we don't have any cheese. Do we have any drinks? No, we need some. All right. Let's get some lemonade. And let's buy some potato salad. Sure. Everyone likes potato salad. The first thing that I would like to explain is this concept of count and non-count nouns. 
A noun is a person, a place, or a thing. So basically, anything that can be seen around you is a noun. Uh, in English, we have two types of nouns. We have count nouns and non-count nouns. Count nouns are those things that you can count. As you can see on the chart, an egg, eggs, a sandwich, sandwiches. We can count eggs and sandwiches. Non-count nouns are those things that you can't count because it's impossible to count. For example, liquids such as water, lemonade, milk, etc. On the chart, you can see a couple of examples. Bread, lemonade. Let's take a look at all the examples on this chart. Some and any. Count and non-count nouns. Do we need any eggs? Yes, let's get some eggs. No, we don't need any eggs. Do we need any bread? Yes, let's get some bread. No, we don't need any bread. Count nouns. An egg. Eggs. A sandwich. Sandwiches. Non-count nouns. Bread, lemonade. Specific. I'm eating an egg. Let's get some bread. General. Eggs are good for you. Bread is good for you. The next important thing to understand is the usage of some and any. Some and any are used to express quantity. I would like to analyze the questions first. Our first question, do we need any eggs? When forming questions, we may use any or some. For example, we could also say, do we need some eggs? Our next question, do we need any bread? We could also say, do we need some bread? However, when responding to these type of questions, we can only use some when responding positively. In our example, we can see how the question, do we need any eggs, is answered by saying, yes, let's get some eggs. And the question, do we need any bread, is answer positively by saying, yes, let's get some bread. Finally, we can only use any when responding negatively. So as we can see on both of the questions display, no, we don't need any eggs. Now it's your turn to practice by making some examples of your own. I would like for you to look into your fridge and make a list of all the things that you need and don't need to buy from the grocery store. For example, I need some eggs. I don't need any milk. After you finish this activity, please share your work in our discussion forums. Okay, so as you see in the video, that was the explanation about some, any, countable noun, non-countable noun, and also the conversation. Uh, pero quisiera saber si está bien claro el uso del son, el any, lo que son los contables, incontables. Do you have any question? No está muy claro si está claro. What do you remember about uh, some in any? ¿Qué recuerdan de some y de any? Son algunos. Y lo utilizamos para eh, oraciones en positivo. 
any, nada o ninguno para utilizar en respuestas o en oraciones negativas. Y en pregunta, ¿podemos usar los dos o solo alguno de ellos? En pregunta, no lo tengo claro, pero yo creería que lo podemos utilizar los dos. Sí, en preguntas se pueden utilizar ambos. Gracias, Juan Carlos. Do we need? Podemos decir some o podemos decir any, cualquiera de los dos. Do we need some or any bread, for example? Mm. Se me fue una letra de más aquí. Entonces, para preguntas, sí, podemos usar some o any, cualquiera de los dos, en pregunta. Pero, en, cuando estamos haciendo oraciones, son para oraciones afirmativas. Eh, por ejemplo, ponemos we need, we need some bread. Estoy diciendo que sí necesitamos algo de pan. Entonces es una oración afirmativa. Entonces uso some. Y any solamente cuando sean respuestas u oraciones negativas. Como decir, we don't, uh, we don't need any bread. Ok. So a la pregunta puedo hacerla con some o con any. So we can say, um, do we need some bread or do we need any bread? I will say, yes, we need some bread. Or, if for a negative, I can say, no. No, we don't need any bread. No, we don't need any bread. So yes, um, para pregunta, podemos usar cualquiera de los dos. Para oración afirmativa, son. Y para oración o respuesta negativa, any. Okay. Y acerca de los nombres que dice contable e incontable. Eh, noun decía ahí. es eh, Un noun es todo lo que nos rodea. Ok. Eh, casa, ventana, niño animal, mascota, whatever, window, todo es un noun, todo es un nombre. Eh, nada más que los dividimos en contables e incontables. Y ahí es donde a veces es un poquito confuso porque en, en español, bueno, nosotros en nuestro idioma casi que todo lo hacemos eh, contable, ¿no? Todo lo hacemos, eh, la clave es si tiene plural o no en inglés. Porque en español lo hacemos llegar a plural, aunque sea a leñazos. Entonces, no. Por ejemplo, no sé si ven aquí el, el, el grammar chart, el voladito este que vimos en el video, que es lo de la gramática. ¿Sí? ¿Se ve? Grammar focus. No. No, no se ve. Okay. No se ve. Entonces necesito... Déjate compartir y compartir otra vez. Ok. Vamos a analizar y decimos... Se corta su audio, Tisha. le escucho nada compañeros ustedes le escuchan no se escucha ah, ok no, no. ok bueno no, no sé se si escucha. Será. no no ahorita, se escucha ahorita, ahorita sí. Sí. Okay. Sí. Sí, sí teacher una pregunta
se cortó de nuevo. No se le escucha, teacher. Y ha de ser por la lluvia, porque no, no me sale como que. Ya se escucha. Hoy sí. Can you listen now? Ahora sí me escuchan. Yes, yes. Hoy sí. Que les estaba compartiendo aquí. Si ¿Sí ven dónde está Dread. Sí. Bread. En nosotros sí decimos panes. Un pan, dos panes. Y para nosotros el pan se puede contar. Pero Ajá. en inglés el pan es incontable. Eso ¿Sí? quería preguntar, teacher. Cabal. <ríe> sí, uh -huh. pero es por lo que en inglés lo que no tiene plural es incontable. Y en inglés el pan, la palabra pan no tiene plural. No van a ver que diga breads. Uh -huh. eh, los líquidos generalmente como agua, en este caso limonada, jugo de naranja, vino, el líquido en sí, pues sabemos es incontable. Eh, el bread, por la razón de que les explico, no tiene plural en inglés. Entonces, por eso se toma como incontable. Eh, ¿Qué puedo hacer si eh, en este caso el bread, lo que es el pan, como es, es incontable por la razón de que no tiene plural. Entonces, esa es la clave. Si no tiene un plural en inglés, entonces es incontable. ¿Y qué puedo hacer? El pan no se puede contar, pero puedo contarlo eh, las... Eh, ¿Dónde están las anotaciones? Okay. La palabra pan, decimos, no se cuenta, es incontable en inglés, no tiene plural. Eh, entonces, eh, se toma como incontable. ¿Qué puedo contar? Decir, slices of bread. Puedo decir, si necesito por rebanadas, decir, I need, por ejemplo, decir I need o, o si le preguntan cuántas cuántas porciones de pan quieres o I, I need or I want I want to o está por rebanadas como el pan que usamos para sandwich podemos decir slice esos son rebanadas slices slice o oh, si son piezas como el pan dulce, entonces le decimos piezas. Pieces of bread. Y así es con, lo que se cuenta son las rebanadas o las piezas, pero la palabra pan no tiene plural, es incontable. Eh, lo mismo sucede con los líquidos, por ejemplo, y ahí viene el tema del how much y el how many, que yo pienso que ya lo vieron. Eh, usamos how much para contables, ¿verdad? Cuando queremos saber cuánto, por ejemplo, how much coffee, como ya decimos, los líquidos son incontables. How much coffee do you drink per day? Entonces, es decir, ¿cuánto café? Si yo voy a preguntar por café, la palabra café es un líquido, es incontable. Entonces usamos how much. How much coffee do you drink per day? Pero ahora si yo quiero ser más específica mi pregunta y preguntarle eh, cuántas tazas de café. Entonces voy a usar how many. How many. El how many se utiliza para cosas contables. La diferencia aquí es de que voy a preguntar por las tazas. How many cups of coffee do you drink per day? Do you drink per day? 
Entonces, eso, eso hace la, lo que yo puedo contar acá son las tasas. Entonces, por eso son how many, porque voy a usar un nombre contable. En este caso, repito, tasas. Aquí estoy usando un nombre incontable para mi pregunta, entonces uso how much. Ya más o menos quedó clarito lo de contable, incontable. Veamos con otro nombre incontable, que a veces nosotros, eh, porque podemos decir, no, pero sí, eh, la palabra money. El money es incontable en inglés, money, dinero. ¿Qué puedo contar? Yo puedo contar los dólares, puedo contar eh, los centavos, las coras, los, uh, los, las monedas en sí, pero la palabra money no es contable. Entonces, how much, por ejemplo, si yo quiero tener how much money do you, do you earn per month? Por poner un ejemplo. How much money do you earn per month? ¿Cuánto dinero ganas por mes? Pero, ¿puedo contar qué? ¿Sí? Perdón, teacher, pero en monedas, eh, coin, lleva también coins, ¿o no? Sí, so you can say how many coins, mm -hmm. how many coins um, do you have in your piggy bank? So yo puedo decir cuántas monedas tienes en tu alcancía. Uh -huh. ¿Cuántas monedas tienes en tu alcancía? Entonces, coins es contable. Puedo decir one coin, two coins, pero dinero no. Si la palabra en sí dinero no tiene plural. So, yes, it makes a difference. Ok. Ok, it's, ¿está más claro ahora? Mm. Yes. Excellent. So, yes, it's cuestión de práctica. Eh, vamos avanzando bien. Si nos queda más chance, podemos hacer eh, ejercicios extra de los contables e incontables. Eh, por el momento aún tenemos tiempo para practicar la conversación que vimos antes de lo que es el grammar topic. Y aquí está. So we can practice. You can repeat at home. Eh, ya no voy a poner el video por cuestión de tiempo, pero se la voy a repetir una vez más. Y ustedes pueden repetir en casa con el micrófono eh, siempre en silencio para, pues, estamos con problemas de internet ahorita. Entonces, eh, se las voy a leer. Les voy a dar chance que repitan en casa. Y luego, si hay alguna palabra que les costó pronunciar, podemos repasarla y luego hacer role play. So let's begin. What do you want for the picnic? Hmm. How about some sandwiches? Okay, we have some chicken in the refrigerator, but we don't have any bread. And we don't have any cheese. Do we have any drinks? No, we need some. All right, let's get some lemonade. And let's buy some potato salad. Sure, everyone likes potato salad. Now it's your turn. Do I have two volunteers? I got Jose 
who was to, okay, Jose and Juan Carlos, you can start. Okay, ¿qué comienza? Voy. Igual le va a tocar cambiar. <laughs> ah, sí, what eso do, sí. <laughs> what do you want for the picnic? Hmm, how about some sandwich, sandwiches? Okay, we have some chicken in the refrigerator, but we don't have any bread. And we don't have any cheese. Do we have any drinks? No, we need some. All right, let's get some lemonade. And let's buy some potato salad. Sure, everyone likes potato salad. Okay. You start now, Jose. James, yes. Uh, what do you want for the picnic? Mm, how about some sandwich? Okay, we have some kit. We have, we have some chicken in the refrigerator, but we don't have any bread. And we don't have any cheese. Do we have any drinks? No, we need some. All right, let's get some lemonade. And let's buy some potato salad. Sure, everyone likes potato salad. You did it very good. Thank you so much for participating. I bought the bread, ya lo oí. <laughs> okay. Um, yes, do we yes. have two more volunteers? <laughs> two more? Okay, we still have five minutes. Two more volunteers. Vamos a escuchar dos más. Ya casi, ya casi nos vamos a tomar el café. Do we have two more volunteers? Two more. Vamos a ver si no, entonces. Okay, I have Erika. And who wants to help Erika? Vamos a ver. And I have Ernesto. Thank you so much. You can start, Ernesto. What do you do? <clears throat> okay, teacher. What do you want for the picnic? Mm. About some sandwiches. Okay, we had some chicken in the refrigerator, but we don't have any bread. And we don't have any cheese. Do we have any drinks? No, we need some. All right, let's get let's let's get some lemonade. 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 And let's buy some potato salad. Sure, everyone, everyone likes potato salad. Salad. Okay, salad. Hey, so yes, excellent. So very good. You did it very, very good. I know this work is kind of difficult. Refrigerator. 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 Oh, Refrigerator. And you can use instead fridge. Okay. Ahí se las pongo en el chat. Es más común okay. decir fridge para refrigerar y es más fácil. Fridge. 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 Ajá. Uh -huh. Es más fácil. Yes, excellent, Erika. Fridge. Okay. Pero aquí That's... dice refrigerator, so yes, it's más complicado, más largo, but anyway, we have another option is fridge. Fridge. So, well, thank you so much for joining today's section. I let you go for your coffee, for your sweet bread, and I hope that you enjoy your afternoon, and see you next week. Okay, okay teacher. The platform, see you. See you, teacher. Bye. Bye. Bye.